Welcome back. You're watching the number one home improvement YouTube channel in the entire world. It is Saturday, January 2nd, starting the new year off, two weeks behind schedule. I was supposed to do this two weeks ago, and that is replace all the baseboard in this basement. Something unique about this basement is I have to take out the old, I don't even think they stained it. They just put up raw wood, and it's a very ugly old profile, old style, DIY basement here. Hello. Oh, it's the drum. They got a set of drums over here. So this is the... The, the baseboard that I'll be removing. And it does, I mean, this is cracked. It doesn't look like it's got a, a top coat on it. It looks like it was just stained with no top coat. And I'll be pulling that off. The only problem is, is they're held on with these tiny little trim head style screws. Because. So I'm replacing some baseboard in a homeowner finished basement remodel. Thought I would share that. Because they framed the basement with steel studs. Now steel studs are very common in a commercial tenant finish construction remodel. They're non-load bearing walls. All they are is partition walls to support drywall and run wires through. And that's how this baseboard is attached. So I've got this bit here, this little square bit, and that is phase one, is I gotta move all the furniture, all the toys, and pull out all the old baseboard. All right, I had to share this one with you. They had this carpet just installed, and this is kind of what happens sometimes, is when they're kicking their carpet in, they just blew right into this wall. I always pre-paint everything. Baseboard, doors, it all gets pre-painted right here in this room. Using Bear, what is this stuff? Bear Premium Plus Paint Primer in one. Uh, this is a interior white semi-gloss that has been beefed up. Yes, that is an actual real term used by the Home Depot. It even says beefed up. What that is, is two ounces of KXL. What that does is it puts more paint into here, more solids. So you get better coverage. You get worse coverage if you just went to buy this white paint. Because there is room in here to add pigment or tint and they add white. The spray gun I'm using for latex paint, I've been using for two years maybe, three years, is the Finish Max Super Extra. This one has been working great for me. Someone asked me in a comment the other day, how do you clean them? I don't really clean them. So I just added more paint to the, to the cup and diluted it with water, mixed it up. I put down one heavy coat because it lays flat. Uh, you're not gonna get any drips or runs. This is kind of a basic, profile for baseboard a little taller uh, it comes in a contractor pack i think there's 120 lineal feet but it's only 75 bucks for the whole pack i lay out four spray them let them dry i'll move them to that room then i'll lay out four more spray and let them dry move them to that room and tomorrow i will take them to the house so once i move this one out i'll just give you a quick example of how i spray the next four since it's winter time i got this 220 heater i use this every winter it's 220, 30, 30 amps. I'm not sure what the BTU is. Maybe about 20,000 BTU. It's loud. It sucks a lot of energy, but that's how I'm gonna bring this, this room up to temperature and get the rest of them to dry faster than this batch. So you may notice that I have a lot of lights over my paint area. And they're kind of out of order right now because I've been moving things around. But I can raise and lower these 
as I need to. Now the reason lights are very important is as you're going along, you can easily see how thick the paint is and how it's wetting out. That's basically it. It really helps getting a good consistent coat over whatever you're painting, a door, trim, or cabinet. So this respirator is a little overkill for latex paint, but uh, I got a good deal on it. It only cost me about... Now there's a lot of people out there who have never worn a respirator or grown a beard that say, oh, those are useless if you have a beard. See how this works? Can you see in there? Goes, air goes through the path of least resistance. So if I close these up just by lightly putting my hands on there, watch. What that means is there's a massive suction and the air goes through the path of least resistance, which is through these filters here. All right, these are the last two. Let's get them done. Whoops. All right, I'm gonna leave the heater off because it's about 68 degrees in here. Keeping the heat off of it and the air off of it keeps dust out of it and prolongs the drying and gives it longer time to smooth out. Let's go put this in. This is where things get fun. You get a lot accomplished in a short period of time. We're gonna use a coping saw for all of our inside corners. So for this wall here, I'm gonna measure from that wall to this wall cut it to length, spring load it in here, bang, 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 put it in. Now this long run here is gonna be a 12 footer. So when it comes into this, this one down here, I'm gonna cut the profile of the baseboard with coping saw, real quick and easy to do. On that end, I'm gonna cut a 45 so that the next piece slides right into it. So I got uh, my baseboard stacked up here, saw right here. This is kind of my, my work room. Those of you who have been following and have seen all past videos do quite a bit of work at this house. And this room is kind of designated where I do my cuts. I save a lot of time and make a lot more money just doing my little chops right here. So as you can see, there's a little bit of an arc here close to the wall just enough to kind of give it a little bit of a spring and then settle it down onto the carpet you don't need to jam it down on the carpet I'm using a 15 gauge cordless nail shooter two and a half inch nails way too long for this application uh, there's no wood back here all i gotta do is go through a half inch of wood half inch of drywall and through like i don't know 18 gauge galvanized studs but does a good job no, I know. On video, this is very annoying. That sound of it ramping up and, and hitting. Uh, you can go pretty quick with this. You can go bang, 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 bang. I kind of don't need to go that fast. So I kind of slow it down a little bit. So I don't quite go bang, 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 bang. And hey, man, just keep talking to me. Let do my work. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like to cut it like this so that this next piece down the line here can tuck in behind it. I need to get myself a cameraman or a camera lady. Flip the board completely around and this is the end that's gonna butt into the piece I already installed. It's gonna butt in just like this. So what I gotta do is put this up here and just trace the profile. So I'm gonna, can you see? Come straight down, follow this line and then straight down like that. And now I'm just gonna cut this out. A lot of times if I have a lot of these and I've got an e easier way to set up in a garage or something, I will do this little swirly do right here with a flap disc on an angle grinder. But with this, there's only three in the entire two thirds of the basement. So you can get away with just doing it 
like this. This first one is tucked way in behind this pipe here. It's hard to get everything in there. Hard to get a cock gun in there. Actually, it's not too bad. Well, it kind of is, actually. Squirt a bit on this one. I'll show you on the one down there where it's not behind a pipe. Yeah. Oh, oh, perfecto. So it squishes out, and I just wipe my finger on it. Caulk and paint. Big caulk and paint. So we'll go back around, caulk all the nail holes. Oh, caulk, caulk any strings. You gotta get out your spackle, your bondo. Hit it up with some caulk. I'll actually be caulking in the baseboard to the wall as well as cutting in with a paintbrush with the same paint. So this is the next 12 foot run and it's gonna go straight into that wall. And this is where I'm gonna cut another 45 going this way. I just line it up here, mark that line, just a very slight spring to it, meaning it's gonna be just a hair longer because you don't want this prying this off the wall. My first cut, I'm not going up to that line. I'm gonna cut a little long. And I'm gonna see how close I got to that line. Then I'm gonna scoot it in just a hair and take a, like a quarter thickness of the blade off and just shave that last sixteenth of an inch off a little bit at a time until I'm right straight at my mark. I'm gonna put a little, little, little cock right on this front edge here so that when it squeezes in, it pushes out, and then I just swipe it. One thirty six and a half to the vertical. A cunny hair longer than 136 and a half. As you can see, it is just a longer than 136 and a half. You can spring this in and it pushes it tight. Squeeze a little caulking in there. There we go, a little caulking. See how that little ripple of cock, cock, cocking squeezed out of there. So I can just swipe that up and wipe that out. And again, I'm going to go through this and hit all this with paint. So I'm going to complain about that. There we go. Tight. This place might look familiar to a lot of people. This is the office room of this basement. And even though it's this a small room, maybe 10 by 10, it's gonna take four to five times longer to do just this room than to do that big room over there. The time that it takes to do a baseboard job or any trim job is the amount of cuts, not the lineal feet. I'm gonna start on this side of the room. Gotta move some furniture. And then I'll move to this side of the room. Don't cut your fingers off. Now I've got 15 and my 18 gauge over here. Sometimes when you're trying to get these to fit tight and you use the 15 gauge, it just whams into it so much it kind of puts it in a spot you don't want it. If you ever run into a miter joint in the outside corner where it's just not quite right, what you can do is take a, uh, oh, the edge of a, screwdriver or something, a rounded tool, and just kind of run it right up and over it. And what it does, it just kind of folds that around and makes it look like it's a perfect joint. So right here is a gap in the wall. And one thing I don't do is force this baseboard to squish in and around everything. I'll go and do my next nail right here on the high point. And this all gets caulked in, and then there is a paint line, a straight paint line, and it gives the perception that the wall is straight and doesn't wiggle like that. So the baseboard is straight, the cut-in paint line is straight, 
makes it look like the wall straight. So the next nail goes about two feet down right there. This little gap here stays. So you may notice that this whole framework here is, looks like it's levitating off the ground. This piece of baseboard and this entire doorway is going to get rebuilt. And when I do that, I'll be making sure these go all the way down to the ground. But that's not on the schedule for several months. So we're just getting something in here that looks, looks acceptable for now. So this is what it looks like when it's all put back together. Yeah, it's hard to see everything. Most baseboard gets covered up. Jesus. <clears throat> We've got base under there. Had a few zigzags behind this door over here. Of course, there's no lights. Door zigzagging going around there. That wasn't too bad. Okay, hope that helps some people out. Little tip here and there. Sometimes it just helps watching somebody do it and telling you that it's pretty darn easy. Because uh, a lot of people are afraid of doing stuff like this. I get the emails every day. I actually had one from a lady saying that her and her husband have been trying to remodel, I think it was their master bedroom, for two years. And they are to the stage of putting baseboard and crown molding in. And she's super anal. And he isn't. He just wants to get it done and in. Man, I'm not sure if it's painted or if it's stained wood, but she wants everything super tight. And you can get it super tight. Uh, there's a couple extra like protractors that can give you very accurate angles on the baseboard. On crown molding, it's very important on stain, stained wood, to get very tight joints. That brings me to what did I charge? Turnkey price was $20. Not bad. You might be saying, oh, I thought you would have charged a lot more. Nope, not that much. $125 in materials in four hours. That's the type of pricing you can get when you work for the customer. This is some of the general talk that is on my Handyman Business YouTube videos. I will leave a link in the description for the other YouTube channel, the Handyman Business YouTube channel. Leave your questions down below and I'll be sure to answer them. Leave your safety concerns. Safety concerns are my favorite types of comments. Goodbye.